When I went to Joe Allard at 23 years old, I thought I knew how to play the saxophone. Actually, I knew nothing. I changed everything, and one of the most important things, things I changed was tonguing. Joe Allard taught me something called forward coning, which involves the position of the tongue in the mouth. I would like to talk about where the tongue sits in the mouth as you play and then I'll talk about the movement of the tongue itself for tonguing. This is forward coning. This pen will represent the air column. And forward coning happens as a result of the position of the tongue in the mouth. Let me show you what you should see a little tunnel where this pen is. That is forward coning. There is in the world, there are two schools of wind playing. One school is reverse coning, another school is forward coning. Reverse coning means that the air is, is more closed in the back of the, of the oral cavity and more and widens as it comes forward. Forward coning this way of playing means that the air uh, uh, is more focused as it comes forward, more open in the back. That all is, that's all as a, uh, a, a result of the position of the tongue. Now here's how you produce forward coning. Allow your tongue, first of all, Joe Allard used to say, the tongue should be the consistency of soft butter or jello. That's very, um, it's a very interesting feeling to experience. I've tried to experience it, and as I just kind of do a meditation on my tongue, you can do this, you just close your eyes and just feel your tongue relaxing. You'll note that your whole body relaxes, actually. Um, some of the yogis talk about power uh, areas in the body. And what, and, or, or chakras, and one of those chakras is right there, and it's the center of ego. As you relax your tongue, this relaxes, and maybe because you're letting go of ego, everything else relaxes, I don't know. But if you let your tongue relax, become very, very soft, your whole body will relax. That should be the consistency of the tongue as you're blowing air. Now, in order to achieve a relaxed tongue, we're going to do a vocal exercise. And if you'd be kind enough to vocalize with me, I don't sing well, I apologize in advance, but just come along with me and I'll try to pick a medium range. Allow your tongue to just sit like this. So loose that when you shake your head, it moves from side to side. Now, vocalize with me and watch your tongue as you do so. If you can, at this point, get a mirror and look at your tongue in the mirror. Just hold a mirror up and look at your own tongue and do this with me. Now, if you see your tongue doing this, obviously your tongue is then tightening. The tongue needs to stay totally relaxed. That's the first step, learning to <clears throat> move air through the oral cavity with a relaxed tongue. Next, you take that relaxed tongue and you allow that tongue to glide back on, on top of the upper teeth. Now, you know, it, you, imagine you're looking down at some railroad tracks and there's a train on those tracks. Let's say a train engine. Note how the train itself is exactly even with the tracks. As a matter of fact, the engine even overlaps those tracks a little bit. The tracks are 
you, your lower teeth here. The engine is the tongue, the train engine. Watch me first and then we'll do it together. Can you see how the tongue is just sitting on top of the teeth? The tip of the tongue should not be behind the lower teeth or up or down, it just sits there. So you take that relaxed tongue, you should be looking in the mirror. Still very relaxed, very loose, it just sits on top of the teeth. When you have accomplished that, the next step is, is to actually produce forward coning. And thanks to my colleague and great friend, the great saxophonist and pedagogue Roger Greenberg, I have a shortcut for you. It was actually Roger's shortcut. Roger said to me years ago, he said, what if, in order to get forward coning, when you achieve forward coning, the back sides of the tongue are barely touching the upper molars? That is forward coning. What if we just asked the students to barely touch the upper molars? Wouldn't we produce forward coning? Sure enough. When Joe Allard taught this to me, I was so fascinated that as I drove back to the West Point Military Academy after my lesson at Joe's house, I was looking in the rearview mirror at my tongue, and the car went side to side all over the highway. Luckily, there wasn't much traffic that morning, and I made it. But it took me about three months to actually produce forward coning. Well, this little shortcut will save you those three months, thanks to Roger. And here's what it is. When you achieve what I just showed you, your tongue is sitting on top of the teeth, totally relaxed, the consistency as close as you can to soft butter or jello. With the back sides of the tongue, you barely touch the upper molars. Watch, here it is. So we started here, we glided the tongue back, now here we go. That's how you produce forward coning. Now once you get forward coning, there are three possible positions of the tip, middle, up, or down. It should be middle. With my finger, I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Watch the tip of the tongue. And here's forward coning, once again. That's the tunnel of air. That focus of the air allows the sound to project. Now, next step. Once you get forward coning and you have to be looking in the mirror, you place the mouthpiece on the upper teeth. So here's forward coning. You've done all the steps now and you have forward coning. Are you going to place the mouthpiece where you would usually play on your upper teeth? Watch. Here's forward coning. When you can do that, next exercise, you close your mouth with your normal embouchure and without tonguing, just play middle B. And then open your mouth, look in the mirror and see if your tongue is still in forward coning. For at least a week, you should play up and down the saxophone a little bit in the, with the tongue in the position of forward coning without moving the tongue yet. You're just learning where the tongue sits in the mouth. So here it is. <laughs> That is forward coning and the position of the tongue in the mouth. Now let's talk about tonguing itself. It's so easy and so simple, I still marvel at what Joe Allard taught me. The, the tongue, the, only the tip of the tongue moves 
The motion is up and down, not back and forth, but up and down. Just the tongue touches the reed, just above the tip of the tongue, and just below the tip of the reed. Here it is, I'm going to do it in slow motion. Now, why only the tip? Well, if the whole tongue moves, then you lose forward coney, number one. Number two, if the whole tongue moves, since 13 muscles of the tongue are connected to the area of the throat, you're, you're causing tension in the area of the throat. So all that happens is the tip of the tongue, which moves up and down, up and down just like that, the tip of the tongue floats on a column of air. That's all. It's so simple, it's almost embarrassing. That's it. That's tonguing, the way Joe Allard taught it to me. Now, I'm just going to go on with some uh, more advanced concepts. When a violinist plays a down bow as opposed to an up bow, there's more of an accent. We call that T tongue. When you want more of a T tongue as opposed to a D tongue, more more definite beginning, you go more towards the tip of your tongue. So here's forward coning, here's tonguing. I'm going to start there and I'm going to change to a T tongue. I'll, I'll, I'll tongue three times where I was and then I'm going to change and tongue three more times with a T tongue. Once again. That's T tongue. Now, if you want less definition in the beginning of a sound, you use a D tongue, D like David. So instead of a T tongue now, I'm, I'll start with the T tongue three times and then go back to a D tongue. So here's T, T, and then I'm going to go to D. I don't know if it looks like much, but it feels very different. It's very subtle. Once again, here's T tongue three times and then D tongue. That's a D tongue. Tobias Mate, the great piano pedagogist or piano teacher, talked about how to start a note, and Joe Allard taught me this as well. How to, how to begin a note with no definition. He said if you're playing the piano and you want no definition, a very, very light beginning on a note, well, if, you, if the keyboard is down here and you start up here, well, you get quite a bit of accent. So then he said, what if you went halfway? Well, that's better. And halfway again, and halfway again. And finally, what if you actually put your finger on the ivory of a piano key and pressed it down a little without making any sound. Well, what's happening when you do that is the hammer on the piano that hits the string, the hammer moves very close to the string, and then you can go the rest of the way and get a very light beginning. The string in this case is the reed. The hammer is the tongue. And here's what Joe Allard taught me to do. He actually taught me to put the hammer or the tongue right on the reed and pull it away as I blow, like that. That's how you start a note with no definition. If you hear, well, that's the tongue before the air. If you hear, that's the air before the tongue. If you do them exactly right, there it is. I'm very grateful to Joe Allard, obviously, for all these wonderful concepts. That's uh, a few words about tonguing, and I think it's some very valuable, valuable information. 
uh, that Joe Allard taught many of us.